Great stories come with great rivals. Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola have understood this well. It is in ideological conflicts that football has soared since its genesis, and who else could embody it more truly than these two strategists of modern football? In their successive confrontations in Germany, England, and on the European stage, they never cease to innovate and to propose two parallel visions of the game, as radical as they are demanding. Since 2009, their longevity with their successive clubs and their regular confrontations allow them to write one of the most enjoyable pages in the history of the game. Between dogmatism and passion, Pep and Jürgen appear as the two sides of the football protagonist coin, and in the end, no matter which side it might fall on, football has already won. A high-intensity clash of styles on the benches of Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola, the emperors of modern football. Since their paths crossed for the very first time in 2013 in Germany for a Bayern Dortmund match in the German Super Cup on the occasion of Guardiola's first match on the Bayern bench, and by the same occasion his first defeat, these two have never been apart. Between them, they have two colossal records, each with national titles, in Spain, Germany and England for one, in Germany and England for the other, and of course, both with the European Grail in the Champions League. Beyond the quest for victory, which is essential to maintain legitimacy at this level, they are two flag bearers of 21st century football. It should first be noted that their playing patterns are above all based on a backbone in line with the evolution of positions in recent decades and fully correspond to the idea of modern football. Two goalkeepers who are very skillful on their feet, favoring a short recovery and high coverage outside their area to compensate for the rise of the defenders. The fullbacks are essential to the deployment of attacks. And of course, the use of all-out pressing in the defensive phase and the famous Gagan pressing when the ball is lost. So what is it that despite these shared playing values sets the two men up for such an intense ideological confrontation? Firstly, we need to talk about the original opposition in style in their game plans. While Guardiola in his early days at Barca favoured a possession game exclusively and based his entire defensive stability on constant ball control, Klopp in Germany moulded his team to accept to being subjected to it. In Dortmund, winner of the two Bundesliga titles in 2011 and 2012 and finalist in the 2013 Champions League, the German coach is working on developing a transitional game based on very rapid offensive projections when the ball is recovered. In short, for the Catalan, goals must be scored mainly from set pieces, while for his great rival, counter-attacking is the main priority in the search for verticality. Although it would be simplistic to reduce Guardiola's management to a game of short horizontal passes, the quest for exclusive possession for his teams almost systematically requires him to face low blocks. You will agree that there is little room for verticality and that the only choice left is to go around the block. For Pep Guardiola, there is never a time for complacency, as when he does not hesitate to replay the game alongside Sterling despite a 6-0 victory in the 2019 FA Cup Final. He does not allow his players any latitude. Dogmatic in his visions of the game, for him it is the game above all else. For Klopp, the well-being of his players is a key notion in his coaching. He is prepared to turn over regularly and is concerned about the personal lives of his players and the impact it can have on their lives. Mario Gotz, who has played under both coaches, notes that Guardiola is less empathetic, going so far as to say he is focused on the match and outside his game plan the players do not interest him. A bit obsessive, Pep. As an extension of this human management, the two men are also distinguished by a divergent vision of the concept of post. Jurgen Klopp is stabilizing his team by constructing his schemes position by position. Liverpool's 4-3-3 system is unchanging, with players placed in their preferred positions for greater reliability and consistency in the system. As for the Catalan, his taste for experimentation and surprising tactical moves regularly leads him to move his players from one position to another. A central defender can slide into the side and the side into the middle, as he did with Philip Lamb at Bayern Munich. He's also often criticized for going overboard in key games, such as his choice to play without a trained defensive midfielder in the 2021 Champions League final. But Guardiola excels at instilling versatility in his players, which is often essential for the development of his protagonistic and attacking game. Beyond an initial 4-3-3 formation, Pep works to produce a shifting system where players regularly slide from one line to another. In the attacking phase, his teams are regularly deployed in a 2-3-5 pyramid, with the flank sliding into the heart of the game and the midfielders inserting themselves into the attacking line. All this is also made possible by the absence of a professional number 9 on his attacking lines. For Klopp, the backbone of his team is anchored on the stability of his defensive axis and his three midfielders. The attacking projections are essentially assured by the fullbacks and his forward line. The main permutation in his team is the one he allows his two wingers, who dive inside and leave the corridors to his ultra-offensive fullbacks. Guardiola the chemist versus Klopp the rational is a good way of defining these two sides of the game. As mentioned earlier, for both strategists, the offensive line is based on the use of a false nine. 
For Guardiola, this is a founding principle of his great Barca in 2009. He placed Messi in a false nine position with Eto on the wing. His axial striker can thus, if necessary, reinforce the midfield line and take advantage of the space left between the defence and the opposing midfield and thus favour an easier control of possession. At Manchester City, he benefits from having a variety of attacking profiles that are skilled enough to integrate this position. Between Foden, Sterling, Gabriel Jesus and, with rare exception, De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva, Pep has plenty to choose from. Klopp is also a fan of playing without a professional centre-forward. A good example of this is the attacking lineup of Firmino, Salah and Mane, which will carry them to the European title in 2019. Firmino, an attacking midfielder by training, covers the central area and frees up space for the two false-footed wingers by making calls. The attacking midfielder does not reinforce the midfield, but acts on the move to destructure defences and free up the wingers, who both operate as two totally free number 10s. It is also worth noting that they share the superpower of turning professional fullbacks into true playmakers in the Premier League. Between the pair of Arnold and Robertson for Klopp and the elusive Cancelo at City, the beginning of this decade in football is marked by the advent of the playmaker fullback, for which the two strategists are largely responsible. At Bayern, the inside back revolution is one of Guardiola's main achievements in Germany. The principle is to encourage Lamb and Alaba to join the midfield in the offensive phases to leave Ribéry and Robin the luxury of enjoying an entire flank. An innovation that hurt Klopp's Dortmund badly at the time. It would perhaps be fair to say that, more than rivals, the two coaches are inspirations for each other. He's not shy about saying so. In 2022, after a 2-2 draw between the two sides, Guardiola admitted, Klopp has been the greatest rival of my career. There is no doubt about it. He is doing world football good. Klopp, a few days later and after a victory for his team, congratulates himself. We beat the best team in the world. It's a pretty special moment. Finally, to finish depicting their difference, another feature of their opposing thinking should be detected in the management of defensive balance. Although both wish to build their game by the desertion of the defensive line by the flanks, both rely on a different compensation scheme. Always ready to favor the offensive surplus, even if it means totally unbalancing his 11, Guardiola recruits very lively and fast defenders at City, so that they themselves ensure the fullback. The two central defenders, therefore, cover at the back of their fullbacks who engage in an express retreat when they lose possession, trying to reach their position in the line before the opposing attack. For Klopp, the compensation is more simply provided by the retreat of the two recuperative outlying midfielders. Our central midfielder remains as a sentinel while the others do not hesitate to compensate for the absence of the fullbacks. Thus, the team, although unbalanced towards the front, retains density at the back and avoids being totally exposed in the offensive phase. This is another point, and not the least, where Klopp distinguishes himself by his pragmatism. You will have understood that with these two, the magic dwells in the details. It is through the extreme similarity in appearance of their teams that the two schools of play that predominantly shape our football today are revealed in concrete terms. Their attacking lines impress with their constant movement and permutations relying on creative and technical wingers, which often encourage them to do without a professional number 9. With their attacking moves and dazzling transitions, football tends to be more and more vertical, unbalanced and versatile. An ode to offensive imbalance, their respective confrontations have given rise to some of the most mythical matches of the new millennium. They also offer the reassuring possibility of choosing between two rivals. Choosing a side often means giving emotion more room, because without a great villain, there is no good hero. So let's enjoy a little more of being able to choose which vision of football embodies the good in our eyes. Thank you for watching our video. Don't hesitate to tell us in the comments if you're a Kloppist or a Guardiolaist. And if you liked it, tell people about our channel. Like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you soon for a new video. Ciao!